Hey guys, and welcome back to Drop the Mic. So y'all know what it is. As y'all come in that door, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember that everything I say over here is alleged. It's in my opinion, and it's for entertainment purposes only. So listen, you guys, there's a couple of things that I want to get into today regarding love and marriage, Huntsville. Okay, so we're going to start off with we know that this weekend is a busy, busy weekend. Okay, for the Love and Marriage Huntsville cast. There are like 85,000 different events going on. And I find that strange. Like, I don't know if y'all had a chance, but when y'all do get a chance, go over and listen to the last video that Wente Talks did. And she will break down her theory for you as to why she believes there are so many events and what's possibly going on behind the scenes. So I don't really have a theory for it, but... I will say, at the very least, I find this extremely strange, right? You got the Espo, okay, that's happening with the scanners, all right? Um, and I got a little bit more tea on that that I'm going to give y'all in just a second. Then you have the um, Women's Empowerment Brunch. I'm going to call it the fake women's empowerment brunch, in my opinion, because they got a whole clown, okay, that is the opposite of women's empowerment as a celebrity guest there. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, too. That's going on. Um, I believe that that was at Nashville. I would have to take a look again, but I'm not I'm not really sure. But I definitely don't believe it's in Alabama. So I guess he'll be going out of town while he's out on bail. Hmm. Anywho, <laughs> find that strange. But in any event, you also have the um, event that Mel is doing in Dothan, the Oh gosh, I don't want to get the name wrong because I always I like to get it mixed up with the mimosa with Mel's, and I know it's not. It's um, it's the sipping, sipping something with Mel. Um, I'll have the correct name for you guys by the end of the video. And also, don't forget that tonight Sharnita's World comes out on the uh, Nubian TV. See, it's so many events. I can't even like keep up with all of them. And I just think that is so strange, like for all of the cast. So let's get into this uh, expo thing. Okay, let's start with that real quick. The expo, we all know had a lot of its hiccups in the beginning okay which caused people to pause because in their mind they're thinking that this is like what a scam <laughs> like it kind of gave off scam vibes because again there was they didn't have a place um that they had you know secured to host it at so no one knew where they were going this weekend um, and then when they were asked about it, they got all defensive and up in arms. And Carlos even came out with some bullshit ass, I don't know, I guess calling himself being upset because people stated that they, um, you know, wanted to know more about the event. So I guess because they asked questions, you know, they trying to ruin their business, just gaslighting as usual. So anyway, back to this expo. Y'all, I heard that they got a great lineup. But I also heard that at least one of the people in the lineup is a scanner too. 
Now listen, this is all alleged, but this is based off of information that is free to look up once you Google this person's name. So if y'all take a look on the screen there, <laughs> you'll see that there is a guy that, um, yeah, got some, um, there's some questions that people have about him. His name is Jay Morrison. Okay. Um, and people are saying when you search his name, that he comes up as an alleged scammer. Okay. And that's crazy to me because it's like, what in the world? Y'all already got enough, I don't know, negativity surrounding this event just based off of how y'all tried to put it out. Then y'all gonna have scanners on the lineup? So let me read to you all what I was sent in my DMs in regards to this man. So this person says, my friend worked for him. He still owes her money. She was a manager, so she was making quite a bit. Allegedly, that was a few years ago. Someone else says, what business does he own? Um, so there is another person that came on and said, I think they said something about what he owned too. I believe he owns or he does something with stocks. I'm not sure. But in any event, this next comment says he still owes a lot of us money. Hundreds of people invested in crowdfunding his Black Wall Street project. He raised over a million dollars in less than a week. Even celebrities invested. Ain't nobody seen a dime. But he and his wife brought a new home and created an actor studio for her. It's wild. Tony the Closer was on his behind about it for about two years straight so there we go this is again all alleged but this is information that is out there on the in, on the interwebs okay so this next person says birds of a feather flock together and they say yeah there are several videos about him online he is well known here in atl his wife acts, acts, and she was Jackie O's, quote, best friend, the one that passed. She hangs with B. Simone. Oh, hell no. This is a joke. <laughs> Y'all, and, I, you know, there's many more messages, but again, y'all heard it here. Like, apparently, this dude has, um... A history of scamming and he's on the lineup as a I guess expert speaker at the Espo and my thing is is that why do people no one wants to learn how to scam okay and if that's not what you are teaching people which is clearly what you're good at then whatever else you're teaching them is fugazi because you can't be good at something that you haven't really done right so again if you're not teaching me how to scan or scam then what are you teaching me because whatever it is that you're pretending to do um you know from what people are saying you ain't got receipts to show that you're an expert in that field <laughs> so y'all it just to me this Espo is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, it just is. Um, they've been coming on the snots. Leak Leak and Fisher has been coming on every day to promote this thing. And listen, I just say be leery. And just when you spend your money, just know what you're spending it on. That's it. That's all you know um and guess what we're all entitled to our opinion we are 
we don't have to um, approve of or like what they do as business people. Um, And just from what I've seen on the show and off the show, listen, they get scam vibes and that's just what it is. (laughs) For real. (laughs) Yep. So on to the next. So y'all, I wanted to talk a little bit about like what I think could possibly be going on behind the scenes in regards to Mel. Y'all, in my opinion, Mel is done with these mofos. She's done with them. Okay. I think that that post that she made about her missing her friend's event was like the writing on the wall. I think that she was pissed about it. I think that she said a lot. And if you just kind of read what she says and break it down that, you know, and read between the lines that Mel is telling us a lot of how she feels, how her week has been and all of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and read it. She says, I am so sad I missed this. I was asked to host his Atlanta event, but literally turned it down because I was told I had to work that Saturday only to determine it was an event I wouldn't dare attend with the presence of another and everyone knew this I then decided I wouldn't miss any other opportunities holding a date I'm walking in my purpose and during and doing operating in my gifts I'm work I'm walking in my purpose and doing and operating in my gifts not waiting not holding my breath not declining the mental spiral all of this caused literally resulted in me having to take a mental health break for a week I just couldn't I have even turned down Super Bowl events. I was booked for holding, in quotes, quotations, a date. To my talented friend at Rudy Currents, I promise I have you on the next gig. Y'all, Mel ain't playing with these fools no more. You hear me? She is documenting. She is speaking about monies that she could that she's lost dealing with this mess she ain't playing with them no more she's done with them in my opinion again this is all my theory she had to take a whole week off to get her head straight for her mental health because in my opinion these people still playing at her face And when I say these people, I'm speaking of the puppet master and his little puppets, the production team. I feel like they, and this is again, all in my opinion, I feel that one of the things that they do is that they don't respect boundaries and definitely don't respect Mel's boundaries. I think that she was very clear especially after she put that DV charge on her ex-husband that she would not and will not work with him or be in his presence again as it pertains to working on the show. I think she was very clear about that. And I feel like they keep playing with her. Now, I can't be sure, but it's giving that you know, some sneaky ish occurred. Let me start off by tell, by saying the date. The date of this quote work event was Stormy's party, her lovers and friends party. Okay. The one that she said she had to work for that Saturday. I'm guessing. Why? Because that was the only event that we saw on social media as it pertains to the show. She, her friend's event was that exact same day. So that's why I'm guessing it's that event. 
We all know who showed up at that event. We all know who showed up. Now, I don't know if he was invited because I think that they put that story out there in an effort to try to cover the puppet master, a.k.a. Sea King's ass, as it relates to him being there. But, you know, I, I'm again, I don't trust anything these people say anymore. I think he put it in motion for him to be there I think they wanted to have an epic clash between the two of them with some type of confrontation or argument or whatever and Mel just wasn't about that no I'm not doing it if he's gonna be there I don't want to attend and I've made that clear y'all this is considered a hostile work environment at this point if you're going to continue to have a person show up when they clearly either haven't been invited or that person doesn't want to be in their presence, right? So one of the things that I realized is that this isn't the first time that they've done this to Mel. They did this to her at her own kid's birthday party at the beginning of the season last season. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember him coming in and screaming in Mama Van's face at the roller skating party for the girls? I do. He wasn't invited to that either. And he still showed up. Now, they said he had a parking spot that had been saved for him and everything. So clearly production knew about it. So once again, they were playing in her face. She said he was not invited. They wanted him to show up so that they can instigate some type of confrontation. At least that's my opinion. Because again, why would you continuously put this woman that has clearly said that she doesn't want to be in this man's presence? He's out on bail on a DV charge. Why would you keep putting him in her presence? Why? It doesn't make sense. Now, Destiny invited him. Well, what the hell was Destiny being uh, there for? Is she a cast member again? They put it on her because, again, they're trying to save their own asses and they're trying to save the puppet master's ass. Because I believe that he is still behind the scenes trying to do things to hurt Mel, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, y'all. So, again, that leads me to believe that she's sick of them. That she's over them in their games. So, she also said that she turned down several events, all right, which to me... That's pain and suffering. She's losing money. Turning down gigs. Actually booking dates. And then not being able to work because said person is there. It is up to her employer to protect her in her work environment. I'm just saying. So... I think the more dumb games that Carlos King keeps playing, the bigger and dumber the prizes are going to be that he wins. Like, stop. It's, I I mean, to me, it's been going on for years and she just sat quiet. And now I think there is movement because she's not putting up with this shit anymore. That's my opinion. We saw them do it before. You know they'll do it again. They wanted an epic showdown at that lover and friends thing. An epic showdown between the two of them. And they knew they could count on El Stupo, a.k.a. Martel Holt, to do it. Because he becomes unhinged in Melody's presence. That's probably the only reason why his ugly ass showed up. 
So now my thing is he's only going to increase the rhetoric. So what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? Child. I feel like that dude never learns. Like, didn't you lose your whole job at Bravo because you just don't know when to stop? <laughs> hmm. Looks like you're going to learn that lesson again over here on own, on the OWN Network. Or either cost them a whole hell of a lot of money because of liability. I'm just saying. So, my thing is that... Um, you know, in my opinion, and if I was male, I would be documenting everything regarding, you know, the harassment, the loss of money. Every time I've asked not to be in this person's presence and they've put them in my presence, you know, all of that. I would, because it's it, at this point, it's ridiculous. So the next thing that I want to talk about. Oh, before I go, before I get to that, I also want to say that it makes sense why Martel put out that clip of that woman, which was the very next day after the lover and friends ball, because he was pissed because he wanted to have his epic meet up with her too. He wanted to confront her on some things. And plus, I think that he's just so obsessed with her that he would do anything to be in her presence. Anything. So, yeah. So, when he saw that he wasn't going to be able to see her, meet up with her, nothing with her. He went back on his attack that next day and put out that dumb shit that that um, social worker lady was saying or whatever she is. (laughs) <laughs> take a look at this and it'll just jog y'all memory do never believe a woman's story in her marriage the amount of times that I have gotten sucked into a woman's story we are so manipulative we know how to dramatize and, and exaggerate the circumstances and experiences in the marriage to suck someone in, to feel sorry for us, to validate us in our victim story. What's his experience though? What's his side of the story? It was, it's just like, it would almost be blasphemy to not believe some of the things a woman says. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you have to know. To never. So the next thing that I wanted to kind of touch on before we get up out of here is this. Why is it that there's a whole woman's empowerment brunch? Woman's empowerment brunch this weekend and Martell is headlining it with a DV charge active out on bail on the DV charge. What kind of women's empowerment brunch is that? Like, I just wanted to touch on that just for a second because are they retarded? I don't are those women like really are they slow? How in the entire fuck can you get a person that has a known history of harassment, of stalking, of abuse? And say they're going to be your celebrity guest speaker at a place where you are empowering women. He's the biggest misogynist there is. He doesn't believe women should even talk unless they've been given permission by a man. (laughs) And that's who you guys are having as your headline or a celebrity guest? (sighs) That is not a brunch I would even want to step a foot in. It's ridiculous. I mean, and you know, in my opinion, this is yet something else set up by the puppet master trying to change the freaking narrative. That's it. That's all. But. You've went too far this time. You're not going to be able to change the narrative of the last six years. Because it's chock full of evidence. It just is. 
And the more you try to change it, the more ridiculous you, the snots, Martel, Stormy, whoever else, the more ridiculous y'all look. That's just my opinion, though. Like, for real. <laughs> That's just my opinion. You know, um, I don't know. You know, you got this clip that I just showed y'all where he actually believes. Let me play it one more time just so y'all can see. Do never believe a woman's story in her marriage. The amount of times that I have gotten sucked into a woman's story. We are so manipulative. We know how to dramatize and, and exaggerate the circumstances and experiences in the marriage to suck someone in, to feel sorry for us, to validate us in our victim story. What's his experience though? What's his side of the story? It was, it's just like, it would almost be blasphemy to not believe some of the things a woman says. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you have to to never see what I'm saying he actually believes that women are manipulative but yet he's headlighting a woman's empowerment brunch I, I, <laughs> you cannot make this shit up y'all you cannot you cannot make this shit up oh my god well, that's all I have on that subject. I'm going to round up this video with something positive. Okay, y'all don't forget to go and watch Sharnita's World. All right. It premieres today on Nubian TV. If y'all do not have Nubian TV, y'all can go ahead and make sure you download the app. If you got Roku, I believe it's on Roku. Everything is up on the flyer that y'all see on the screen. So go and support Mel's new show that her production company, the Twisted Tilt, I always say Twist Tilted Crown, that the Tilted Crown produced. Okay. I think that you all will definitely enjoy it. Um, when we interviewed Sharnita, she was an absolute gem. Funny, transparent. What you see is what you get. But best of all, a mother plucking boss. A millionaire several times over. And she is not ashamed to say it. Nor ashamed to say that that is what she manifested. So this young lady is, I think this show is going to live up to a lot of what we're looking for. Black excellence, honey. A real marriage with real children. Okay. And, you know, just every day doing the daggone thing. So y'all please make sure y'all check that show out tonight. And that's pretty much all I have for this video. Look, y'all don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see all you guys in the next one. Bye.